What's up guys, Mason aka Knack here, and that spur over my right shoulder, keeping his eye out for enemy insurgents. Now for the next video in my Meathead Book Club feature on YouTube, I want to chat with you about The Terminal List by Jack Carr. Now it bills itself as a thriller, and it definitely did not disappoint. And the easiest way to vouch for that is the fact that as soon as I finished it, I went on Amazon and bought the rest of the series. And I'm really excited to read it, even though I'm still upset that if you see on the sleeve art, they moved the Jack Carr from the bottom here to the top on this fourth book. And if you're curious, on the first one, it matches the, uh, the others. So I don't know why they decided to make that change for the fourth book, but that's going to be upsetting for the feng shui of uh, my bookcase. Now, I originally heard about this book because it was picked up by Amazon TV or Amazon Prime TV for a series headlined by Chris Pratt. And then when I also found out that it was written by a Navy SEAL, I definitely want to read it because I love supporting veterans. I mean, you can see right now I'm wearing a Navy SEAL shirt made by Jocko Willink's Origin. Um, also wearing my Black Rifle Coffee Company pants and reviewing a book by another Navy SEAL. So this Air Force meathead is definitely in full veteran meathead mode right now. A quick update, like think of how it started, how it's going. You know, I used to have respect for Chris Pratt but when I was marketing my novel, I sent a copy of my novel, which I spent 10 years writing, to him to ask him to be on my team. And instead of doing that, uh, he bastardized my life's work with The Tomorrow War. And you can see him method act parts of what I described in my novel in uh, The Terminalist. So he actually took my work and stole it and for his own profit, in addition to making Jack Carr complicit in that theft because he method acted exactly what I described instead of coming up or following the descriptions in the book. And it's crazy to see how exactly word for word what I described was utilized in the adaptation that Chris Pratt did in The Terminalist. That guy's a piece of shit. Especially, you know, if you learn, if you study like religion, like thou shalt not steal one of them, right? Uh, obviously Chris Pratt never got that fucking message. But on top of that, you factor in, there's this thing like, don't take the Lord's name in vain. And that's not about saying, gosh darn it. What that's about doing is not using God as a sales pitch. That's all that piece of shit Chris Pratt does. Fuck you, Chris Pratt. Now, before I dive in and go into the nuts and bolts of this book, I want to say that if you're new to the military, if you weren't in the military, you can read this book and enjoy it. But one of the things that was a drawback to me, even being a veteran myself, was some of the terms I was not familiar with. However, when I finished the book, I found this great thing, the glossary of terms, I believe it's on page 389. And it's about five pages explaining what the acronyms are that it uses throughout the book. And I would suggest no matter who you are, give that a skim first, just so that you're familiar with it. Because even though, once again, I knew about 90% of the terms, there were a few that I didn't know and I even like Googled some of them. So uh, I'm sure the CIA is keeping an eye on me now, if they weren't already. But, uh, I can definitely see after finishing this book why it has been picked up by Amazon. I mean, it is a nonstop go, 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 go. If they turn this single book into 10 chapter or 10 episodes, every single episode will definitely have some action in it because this book has nonstop just action. And you can definitely see the Navy SEAL special operator influence in the, uh, in the book. And on that note, I want to say that Jack Carr, I'm definitely glad that he's on my side because even if you look at like his author photo. I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit scared and intimidated. So, uh, Jack Carr, please don't be, uh, be upset with me for knocking on the cover art there or the uh, the movement of the feng shui because I still love you. Glad you're on my side. Uh, with that though, this book is definitely something I recommend. Um, it, like I said, it kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. I don't want to ruin any or give away any of the plot. Um, obviously, it's been picked up by Amazon, so it's you can look for it as a voucher in that respect. But I really don't read much fiction. Like if you look at my, in the entire history of this Meathead book club, there's very few items on here that are fiction. And so for the fact that not only did I enjoy, finish this fiction book in three days, but bought the entire series, I think is just a great testament to how good it is. Uh, and once again, it just shows that a lot of the best things that are done are done by veterans because they have that life experience. Like J.R.R. Tolkien, right? He was a veteran and he got a lot of his inspiration from World War One. They say that uh, I think some of the like the inspiration for Mount Doom was watching German artillery barrages destroying landscapes and he, like that was kind of the desolation that he pictured for Mount Doom. Uh, but that's just a bit of a ramble there. Now I will say that this book will definitely uh, make you not trust anyone <laughs> pretty much, but at the same time, 
you know, it also was really good to see the intimate relationships that he had with some of like the character James Reese had with some of the other uh, veterans that he'd interacted with in his military service and how those people were some people that he could count on 100 percent. And I'll say that being a veteran myself, like I have my veteran friends that I can just relate to and count on for anything. And it's weird because my civilian friends, they just can't even touch that level of camaraderie, even the friends that I've known since high school. And I really like that aspect of this book. One of the other things I loved about the book was some of the character descriptions, which are going to be very difficult to convey in a TV series. So I'm looking forward to how they do that. And what I mean by that is, you know, James Reese or had, like you hear the inner monologue of James Reese, who's the main character in this several times. And one of the things that you hear is like his absolute disdain for officers and especially like non-special operators. So being an Air Force rear echelon engineer type, like I'm sure James Reese would just be like, oh, I hate this guy. But uh, Jack Carr, hopefully you'll, you won't hold that against me too much. And, you know, maybe one day we can be friends or something. Uh, I think you live out in Utah, so if I come out skiing, maybe you can like watch me run into a tree, something like that. Uh, but I just really enjoyed like that kind of inner monologue, especially when he describes the political class of Washington, D.C., and the absolute disdain that he has for how the uh, like the military industrial complex just exploits both the taxpayer and the operator on the ground and how you know, all of these people are making millions and millions of dollars in the United States, and yet they're really selling out the people trying to get the actual job done. And so I especially love just the descriptions of the politicians and like kind of how that he was, the, the politicians were judged by both themselves and everyone around them. Like some of those just descriptions were absolutely phenomenal, where like the person was a high, po highly polished, perfectly poised individual, uh, but you could tell that everything they did was contrived and they had absolutely no values or integrity. And then you compare that to, once again, those veteran friends that James Reese had that he was able to rely on as he was going through his trials and tribulations. And it was just interesting to see that dichotomy, I guess, or like the difference between the politician who is so self-serving versus the veteran friends who would do anything to help out their friend. Uh, and I just really like that. On top of that, he does a great job of describing some of the savagery of warfare from time to time, specifically one of the backstories of one of the main characters. I don't know who's playing it in the series, but... Uh, it's one of the female characters, and they talk about her backstory, and I really hope that they describe that exact backstory somehow in the book or in the series. Maybe they'll do like a flashback or something like that, because I think the that fact is definitely very important. Um, you know, it's once again, I would just say, you see in the news where it just it's amazing the way the news reports things. I mean, right now there's a New York Times article that I've been seeing where it's describing Osama bin Laden as a great family man and devout uh, Muslim. And it's like, that guy was a mass murderer. Do not fucking sugarcoat that. And it really pisses me off to see that. Um, and I just feel like maybe the American public has lost touch with the realities of the world. And it was really good to see in this book some of the descriptions of like the radicalized individuals across the board and just once again, how the special forces operator can get sold out and turn into the villain uh, in spite of the fact that he's doing nothing but the right thing. Uh, so anyways, I think I just rambled a good bit, but I definitely love this book. Highly recommend it from start to finish. It's just a thrilling read. Uh, but once again, I would suggest starting in the back and reading this glossary of terms just so that you won't be completely uh, out in the blue, and especially if you just buy the book before the uh, series goes live, read the read that glossary of terms because I'm sure that they'll be using those acronyms in the book. And even if you're just thinking about joining the military, you want to learn more about the military. I mean, literally, this like five page glossary of terms is probably an incredibly good primer. So with that being said, highly recommend the Terminalist by Jack Carr. And once again, I've already bought the uh, the next three books, and there's a fifth one that I pre-ordered that's due in April of 2022. So I'm looking forward to that as well. But I'll probably read these like once a year as the series is released. And once again, that is starring Chris Pratt on Amazon Prime. So really looking forward to that. This will probably be one of the first times other than uh, The Lord of the Rings that I've actually read something before it went to a publication or sorry, into a movie format. And I'll just remember like there's certain lines in here that I really am excited and certain things I'm really excited to see maybe Chris Pratt pull off, especially one of the fighting scenes where he catches a a trio of individuals off guard, if you will. I'm curious to see how they depict that in the uh, series because that may take it from, you know, up a rating scale. <laughs> um, but like, I remember when The Hobbit was turned into three movies and it was like, this is a short book and it was turned into three movies. And in spite of that, they omitted my absolute favorite song from The Hobbit and it really upset me. 
Um, so I'm just, I really hope that my favorite parts of this book make it into the series. Just a reminder, in case you forgot the intro, I won't be supporting The Terminalist or any of the follow-on movies or books just because Chris Pratt, again, is abject human garbage. And it's because you're a great writer and a true freaking American hero. And I'm, once again, just really enjoyed your work, and I'm glad that you were on my side back in the day. Thanks again. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you pick up The Terminalist by Jack Carr, and uh, have a great day.